everybody, this is a video screencast to show you how to take your data from your Beers Law Lab and put it into Excel and graph it. First off, you downloaded your data as CSV files. So you're going to have two separate files, one for your spectrum and one for your calibration plot. To get these two workbook files, Microsoft Excel workbook files, you need to open one of them. And you want to take the data from the other one, so open the other one as well. And you want to combine the data. So I'm going to click and drag, and I'm going to hit cut. Alternatively, I can hit control X, go into the other one, select where I want to put it, and hit uh, paste. Or I can hit control V. I'm done with the other one, so close it. Don't save it, save it as a backup. And then I want to save this workbook, so file, save as an XLS file. So change the file type to XLSX. And I want to get rid of this .csv extension. It's trying to edit the name. I'm going to hit save. And it will make a new file right here um, that's a Microsoft Excel worksheet rather than a comma-separated file. So I am working in this document. So you can see I have two data sets, my full spectrum data, as well as my calibration plot. Um, whoever's data this was did not type or did not take an absorbance somehow. So I'm just going to take that data out. They probably have it in their notebook. Um, they should also have a zero, zero point. If you don't have a zero, zero point, put it in there because you did uh, calibrate your spectrum photometer with distilled water. So it should have a concentration of zero, the distilled water. And since you calibrated it to that distilled water, its absorbance should be zero. Next, we want to make two plots. So I want to scroll to the bottom of my data. I always select from the bottom. That way you don't um, try to click and drag and then overshoot it by a thousand lines. I always click, click on the last um, one. And so click, drag. I'm going to go all the way up to the top. And I've selected all my data. I don't want the, the header row. I'm going to go to insert. And I want to put in a, a no data point smooth line graph. So scatter with smooth lines. I don't want this one where it's just going to be a scatter plot. I don't want this one with a scatter plot and smooth lines. I don't want this one with a scatter plot and straight lines, nor do I want just straight lines. I want a smooth line. So I'm going to insert that. So that is one chart. My other one is going to be from my calibration plot. So select that data, go to insert. And this one I want to be a scatter plot. So there I have my two raw charts. Uh, there are a couple of things that we want to do right out the gate, and that's the first thing we want to do is we want to uh, change their fonts to Times New Roman. And I guess you can only do one at a time, so let me click on the first one. Um, so change from Calibri to Times New Roman. There you go. And I could do that the same one. Um, I could also take a Format Painter and so I select on my chart, I hit Format Painter, and I click here, and it changes the formats to match. So I can do that as well. And so that will accomplish the same task. So I have my two charts. I also want to remove the borders. That's not necessary. So select both. Go to Format. Again, I guess you can only do one at a time. So I select one. And what you'll notice is when I select one of these charts, I get this chart tools menu that pops up there. And so I select that, go to format, go to shape outline, and I don't want the outline, so no outline. And you can see the difference between the two. This one has an outline, this one doesn't. So I select that one, shape outline, no outline. There we go. So I have put them both in Times New Roman. I've removed the outlines. Um, next, some things I want to do to both is I can make it so they both have axes labels. So I can click on my first one, go to the Add Element menu, and I want axis titles. And then I could do the same one to this one over here, axis titles. I could be more specific with adding chart elements by going to this submenu, and I could go to just my prime. I could just select the primary horizontal or just the primary vertical, or I can go to more options and it will pull up more options for me, but I don't want that at this time. 
So I have my axis titles down here. My chart title is already activated automatically. Um, I'm going to want to move these charts to their own sheets so that I have more resolution in what I'm looking at. So if I right click on a chart and go to move chart, I want it on its new sheet, on its own sheet. And uh, this is going to be a full spectrum graph. graph. I'm going to pull spectrum. There you go. And that moved it to a new tab. So I was here and moved it down here. I want to do the same thing for this one. Move the chart, new sheet, and this is going to be my calibration plot. So I'm just going to call it calibration. Okay, there we go. So I have my two charts here in much higher resolution because they are bigger. Next, I want to um, let's let's start with the full spectrum chart. You can see that my spectrum photometer didn't start taking absorbance data until somewhere in here. I, I think it starts using 380 nanometers and it went to 900 so there's no point in graphing from 0 to 380 or anything above 900 so I'm going to edit my graph so that it's not showing all that extra um, part of the uh, axis so if I click on my chart you might have to click twice before you can select the axis numbers you want to make sure they're selected and then you're going to right click I didn't right click on it let me try that again right click and I want to format the axis it brings up a menu over here I want my minimum minimum to be 400 and I want my maximum to be 700 the visible spectrum so click out of that somewhere else there you go it sets it you can close that menu so I've set my axis on that one and now I'm ready to put um, a descriptive title so I just clicked on this chart title and I can click again to change it. I hit a control A to select all um, and I'm going to change the title to something descriptive. So this um, graph may help me find the lambda max so I can type in determining and I want to put lambda max so to put the Greek letter lambda I'm going to go to insert all the way over to symbols and then I was obviously using the symbol recently because it's first up but you want to be in the font that you you're using so times new roman and then the subset you can scroll down to greek and coptic and it'll bring you down to the, the region you want to be in and then you can go ahead and hit insert so now i have insert and i want lambda and i want to use subscript well i guess it's not not going to let me put a subscript in a title but lambda max and it can be the lambda max. Oh, in this case, I use blue food dye. So of blue food dye. I the blue, make it look better. And then the lambda, I can see if I can maybe increase the size of that to make it look a little bit better so you can kind of tell that it's, I'm making an effort to make it look like a subscript. Okay, so there's a good title. Now I want to label my axes. And so over here, I have, I have absorbance. So I'll click on the axis title here. I'm just going to type in absorbance. Um, normally, I would put in the units in parentheses. But the thing is, absorbance is unitless. So I'm just going to leave it like that. The axis title on the x-axis, we know that is the wavelength. And the units for that one was nanometers. So I'm going to put that in parentheses afterwards to tell the person looking at this graph that it's in nanometers. And this graph is all set and ready to go. For my calibration plot, I want to do a couple other things. Let's start off by doing the axes since we're just doing that in the chart title. So the chart title, I could call it the calibration curve for or of blue food dye and then I want to put the lambda max that I made this curve at and so I use a lambda max of 626 nanometers so I have the calibration curve of blue food dye at 626 nanometers so there's my title over here again I have my unit list absorbance and then on my x-axis this case it's going to be concentration 
and then the units on this will be molarity, so moles per liter. There you go. So I have my axis titles, and I have my axes titles rather, and then I have my uh, chart title. Next, the whole point of making this calibration curve is so I can get a, a line, so a regression line. So to add a regression line, I'm just going to select my one of my data points as part of the data set. It will automatically select all of them. I then want to either right click or go to add element and go to trend line. So if I right click, add trend line, and I want it to be linear. I don't want to forecast beyond the, the bounds of this graph. I want to display the equation on my chart. And then I also want to display an R squared value, um, which is a statistical measure, which shows me how well the line fits my data. This line fits my data perfectly because I have an R squared value of one. So I'm going to get out of that menu and you can see that I have my line formula already shown. If it didn't show that, or I mean, I guess, I'm not sure if I showed you how to do that or not. I kind of just do it automatically. I've done it so many times. Uh, if it didn't show that, you would check this, these two boxes. So display equation on chart and display R squared value. Um, so when you click out of that, then we have it how we want. You will notice, you will notice that, I don't know why this menu is staying stuck up. Okay. So you'll notice that this has more sig figs than we actually would have from our data. And so we want to change this so that it's only showing the appropriate number of sig figs. So to do that, you're going to right click on the label and you want to format the trend line label. We are currently in the, the category of general numbers. We are using this for science. We're going to go down to scientific numbers and it's going to put everything in scientific notation for us. And we want two decimal places because we have three sig figs. And that looks good to me. Uh, so close that out. If you want, you can make this look better by making this uh, bigger so you could, you could see it rather than having to um, look for it. You could also make your axes, your axes or your axis titles bigger. I guess you can only do one at a time. I guess I could bring them up to 14. There we go. I can bring my title up to something bigger. I just did 20. Make my other graph match. So these were 14 each. And so at this point, I'm just trying to make my, my stuff look better. And everything looks good. So now I have two solid graphs to submit. I have my full spectrum graph, which shows my lambda max, which you could label because you you found that graph uh, using Logger Pro or your LabQuest. And then this, the regression line was calculated for you. So that's it. I hope this was helpful.